Let's talk about how to build a content strategy with SEMrush. You know, in today's world with businesses creating content oftentimes every single day <laughs> on the regular constantly and content being such a pervasive part of digital marketing, it's important to have an effective strategy in place so that you're not just winging it, right? And a tool like SEMrush, if you haven't used this tool already, I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up for a trial and you can use all these tools and everything. But a tool like SEMrush is going to allow you to figure out using actual data. It's going to allow you to figure out what's happening in your niche and what you should be doing in terms of creating content, right? And when we're talking about this uh, content creation strategy, it's mostly going to be organic. So SEO, you I mean, you can create content for ads, but that's not necessarily what most people think about when they talk about content creation. So we'll use an example here, keto recipes. So let's say that we have, um, let's say that in this example, we are delish. This is our website and we're going to try to improve things for keto recipes. We're already doing quite well, but we want to improve things or maybe we'll flip this around and say we're wholesome yum and we want to compete against delish basically what we'll do is we'll come to semrush type a keyword into the top here click search it's going to give us some information about what is happening with this keyword if you don't already have a website so let's just say you're coming into this brand new you want to create a website about keto recipes you're really passionate about it if you're starting off brand new you don't really have a website to check and see what's going on with your current setup. So you could start by just putting a keyword in here, like your main keyword, clicking search. That's gonna give us a whole bunch of data here in terms of the search volume, the difficulty for trying to rank for that keyword in with SEO, volume distribution across different countries, the trend over time, the intent behind the keyword, whether somebody's looking for more information or trying to buy something. Um, paid ads information, tons of data here that we can dig into, right? But the way I like to do this is to provide a seed keyword and then go down here and find in the actual search results who the top companies are that are ranking for these terms, right? So Delish is an example here, Wholesome, Diet Doctor. And we can start expanding upon and figuring out what each of these competitors has going on or if you have a website you can also just compare them using the keyword gap tool so there's the keyword gap tool right here if you open this up we can add in our own website we'll say that we're delish and we're up against our competitor here wholesome yum we can click compare after we put those domains in that's going to show us that we are crushing it so we have 2.2 million keywords that we are ranking for they have 538 theoretically right in this example and then <clears throat> we can see some info down below in terms of the top keywords that people are um, finding this this website for so they have the estimated volume which is just a calculation of the um, excuse me, this is the actual search volume, um, the number of uh, search results. I, I can just hover over these. The number of URLs displayed in the search results, the average uh, number of times the users have searched for a given keyword per month. Okay, there are some instances where it, it uh, figures out, like based on the ranking, and the volume and I'm not sure it's going to do it here because we're in the comparison but um, we can see where this company is ranked this company is ranked and start to figure out what we want to go after here the problem is this is all random information that's probably not gonna be relevant because we are going after keto so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna filter these keywords down by the term keto and then it's going to have a whole bunch of ideas and we can we can sift through these so we can go to missing so we can look at what is this competitor ranking for that we're not even ranking for at all like the keto flu that's interesting 
some something that happens when you go into ketosis. So, you know, that might be a good idea for an article that we could create talking about the keto flu, the different symptoms, how to prevent it, all that good stuff, right? So maybe we like these ideas. We could start selecting these ideas, these keyword ideas, adding them to a list, which we can then come back and, and manage through the keyword manager. But what I like to do is just export them. So you can export these and just have it export the selected ones that you've selected over here, which will then allow you to build a list that you can save and figure out what keywords are out there that you can target. You can even see the keyword difficulty for those keywords, the search volume. And that's what's going to allow you to start to build out a content strategy of, all right, these are the topics that we need content for, right? Here's sort of the angle. We can even look at if we want to, let's say we want to go after this topic here. We can even do more research, click into this keyword, look at the top ranked so that it looks like Harvard is <laughs> number one. So it might be a little difficult to outrank Harvard depending on the situation. But, um, you know, we can take a look at this blog that's ranked number one and see, okay, what is it talking about and how could we make a blog that's even better? Actually, it looks like this is an image. This is the people also ask section. Uh, but we could, you know, take a look and see, um, what we can go after. We can also look at the different questions people are asking related to this keyword to get more ideas. But the ultimate idea is to figure out, first of all, where you can target new uh, keywords and then what content you should be creating for those keywords. But ultimately, anytime you're creating this content, it still needs to be quality, uh, provide value, and draw readers in so that they're actually engaging and consuming the content. Otherwise, not really going to do you a whole lot of good in the end, right? <laughs> so that's part of why it's helpful to have, I mean, you can view the, the search engine results here, export this if you want, but just having an idea of who's showing up and being able to go through and analyze what they're doing. And then you can just repeat that process for the next keyword and the next keyword. Until you've developed a strategy of what contents you're going to build, uh, how you're going to create that content, the order in which you're going to create it, you, you might want to start with some of the smaller um, or the longer tail keywords, the ones with less search traffic that might be a little easier to rank for with a lower keyword difficulty, something like how long does the keto flu last? Then after you've created some content around that, you start to rank, do some internal linking in your website and build up, you know, to where you can rank for something like what is keto flu and then eventually keto flu and just keep stacking that as time goes on. So that's sort of a gist of how you would use SEMrush for building a content strategy just based on some simple insights that you can collect. You know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. <laughs> but I hope that was helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to deal with Google Ads anymore, <laughs> then you can always reach out to me. Uh, my company is Missoula SEO Geek. I'll leave a link to my website down below, but we do manage Google ads for different companies and different industries and you can come learn about what we do, what makes us unique. You can even read some of the testimonials from some businesses that we've taken from zero to over a million in revenue like this one here and really just see that, you know, this is the type of thing that's going to explode your business growth. So feel free to reach out. You can always give us a call or contact us through our website and look forward to working with you.